of my good afternoon to all. My name is Janneke. I'm the Managing <coughs> Director of ICS Canada. Welcome to the National Research Council Advanced Transportation Systems Program, ATSP Overview. Today, we will be um, doing some introductions, then followed by an ATSB overview, and at the end, there will be Q&A. For those who have any questions, kindly use the question pane to submit your questions. And after William's presentation, Mike Bailey will direct those questions accordingly. Today's webinar is facilitated by Michael Bailey, who recently was a director at Streetlight Data and is now retired. Mike is the former CEO and chairman of ITS Canada and a board director. Mike, over to you. Well, uh, good morning and to uh, good morning and good afternoon to everybody. Uh, I'm going to introduce our speaker for the afternoon, uh, William um, Maida, of uh, professional engineer, the program manager of Fleet Forward 2020 at the National Research Council. Uh, William has a Bachelor of Aerospace Engineering degree from Carleton and, and many, many years of experience in product and technology development, system design, specification, testing and simulation for a variety of aerospace, military and, and transportation and telecommunication applications. He's leading currently a multi-domain research program focused on ITS, connected and autonomous vehicles, urban fleet optim optimization, specialized off-road mobility and heavy duty fleet aerodynamics. In addition to that work, if, if, if that wasn't enough, he serves on international NATO committee chairing a, a group that's working on standardization recommendation development for next generation reference mobility model, uh, tasked with developing modeling and simulation standards for off-road vehicle simulation, having previously co-chaired uh, a cooperative demonstration of technology for next generation NATO reference mobility model. Uh, I'll turn turn the presentation now over to William to speak to us. William will be speaking for uh, 20 or so minutes, and then we will uh, open up the uh, the question period. And as as Janneke said, uh, please type your questions into the question pane on the uh, on on the uh, go to meeting go to webinar box. Great. Uh, thank you very much and good afternoon and, and good morning to our colleagues on the West Coast. Thank you, Mike, uh, for the introduction and, uh, and to you, Yannicka, for the invitation to present today. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm delighted to, uh, to be able to present to you today the, the National Research Council uh, as a whole uh, and specifically some of our capabilities and programs in the advanced transportation space. Uh, I believe uh, the uh, the presentation material will be uh, made available to you, uh, I think, in the form of a video uh, at some point following uh, today's uh, webinar. I think uh, I think it's important to start with the NRC uh, and who we are. So, for those of you who don't know, the National Research Council is Canada's premier research and technology organization. Uh, we are coast to coast to coast in Canada. And uh, just for a little bit of stats, um, we have um, more than 3,500 researchers employed um, directly by the, the National Research Council. And we also uh, host the, uh, the IRAP or uh, Paris program. Um, and last year, you know, we, we worked with over 11,000 small and medium enterprises. Uh, in 3,400 of those cases, we, we helped invest in their technologies and their products and their research. A um, hundred, a thousand companies uh, we collaborated with on research and development, you know, 152 hospitals, um, many, many colleges, universities, other government departments, and many provincial and municipal uh, administrations throughout Canada. Uh, we are here to support business in Canada. That is, that is part of our mandate. We have uh, 14 areas of expertise. Um, ranging from aerospace and construction to a, aquatic and crop resource development, all the way to metrology, uh, advanced electronics, um, and medical devices. The, uh, the program that I 
uh, LEAD, Fleet Forward 2020, is hosted in our Automotive and Surface Transportation Research Centre. Uh, in this centre, we, uh, we also host programs in advanced manufacturing, uh, vehicle propulsion technologies, and uh, rail vehicle technologies. And I will brief um, the, the vehicle propulsion and um, rail vehicle programs as well today, just to give you a snapshot of all the work we're doing in the transportation sector. Um, I, I want to put this slide out here. This is NRC's mission and values. Uh, and, and it's meant to show you all that, that we're there to work with you, uh, to partner with you, and support you uh, in your strategic research, uh, in scientific services, uh, and in any way we can help you to meet Canada's uh, current and future uh, industrial and, and research and societal needs. Um, our goals, you know, our values make a positive difference for anyone we work with. Uh, we're responsible for our work in our workplace. Um, we, have, uh, we hold ourselves to a very high standard of quality in the work we do uh, when we do work with our partners. We value leadership uh, initiative and, and you know, bring best practices to everything we do. Um, we're open, uh, fair, uh, and trustworthy. Uh, so we are, um, we are seen worldwide as, as a place to go for unbiased science-based um, you know, policy decision support or, or, or just research. And we actively collaborate um, to engage vital knowledge and expertise. Uh, and again, with the, the with the goal of benefiting uh, all of uh, all of Canada's industries. So, as you can imagine, there are many different opportunities uh, to work with the NRC. Uh, we will work with uh, with tier one suppliers, with OEMs, with small medium enterprises. Uh, we'll work with uh, those uh, inventors who are just starting out, as well as other government departments, and and that might be municipal uh, government agencies or or federal agencies. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, we have the mechanisms and the tools in place uh, to effectively work with all of those customer segments. How you can work with us, uh, or how you can how you can see us? You know, we we build individual client relationships. Uh, we host workshops, develop workshop programming in conjunction with our our partners. Uh, you'll see us present at conferences and and publishing. Um, we're out there trying to trying to help uh, connect with you directly. You can work. Um, we can help you access um, IRAP funding. Uh, we can provide direct research services to you. We can enter into uh, collaborative research agreements. Really, um, there are no limits on the ways you can interact with us and, and, uh, and uh, the levels of support that you can receive from us. Within the Automotive Surface Transportation Research Center, uh, we have a number of key facilities and capabilities, and I just want to give you a snapshot uh, of some of those um, so you can have those in mind uh, you know, when, when you have your next opportunity. Uh, at our Ottawa, oh, I should mention that um, our uh, research centre does have four sites. Uh, we have a, a fairly large contingent in Ottawa, uh, a large contingent in Boucherville, Quebec, uh, we maintain a presence in uh, Saguenay, and we also have a presence in London, Ontario. Um, that said, uh, you know, it sounds like we don't have um, uh, much presence uh, in, in the Far East, Eastern Canada or Western Canada. But the way you can access us in those areas is, is through our, our partner research centres or through an IRAP representative uh, who can always connect you with the appropriate resource at NRC. Uh, now back to I guess uh, the specific facilities that we uh, that we operate. So we have a, a, a very large climatic test facility capability in Ottawa, um, minus 50 to plus 50. Uh, the chamber is approximately 100 feet long, 20 feet wide, 20 feet tall, 
And we can basically do snow, freezing rain, um, solar loading. It's fully instrumented. It's accessible to the rail network. Um, if you have smaller jobs, we can divide up the, the chamber. And it's, it's fantastic for those people who have uh, time-sensitive climatic um, testing requirements. Uh, in the past, uh, you'll see in the picture here, you know, uh, um, a metro uh, subway car. Uh, we've we've tested um, main battle tanks for the Department of Defense. We do wing de-icing testing in there. Uh, we even tested the uh, the Disney monorail before it was put into service. So I mean, we can basically handle anything that will fit through the door and fit within the uh, within the facility. We have very extensive modeling and simulation capabilities. Um, everything from computational fluid dynamics to multi-body physics to very specialized code um, for rail wheel interaction uh, for the rail industry uh, and very specialized uh, off-road vehicle performance uh, tools that we use. Uh, these images are, are just some of the examples of, of the kinds of work we do. Um, from uh, the, the top right corner, uh, this is a 30% a, a model or 28% model in our wind tunnel facility, also in Ottawa that we have access to, uh, backed up by, you know, the just to the right of that, computational fluid dynamics. Um, in the multi-body physics and rail world, uh, you see there a string of, uh, of rail cars that have unfortunately overturned. Uh, so we've done work in in the couplers to to see if uh, we can't prevent uh, that sort of domino effect in the rail industry. And in the image in the bottom right uh, is a uh, a vortex model of uh, a main battle tank. This is a um, effectively real time simulation environment with uh, the track uh, ground performance modeled uh, in real time uh, with obstacles, with slopes, with varying uh, attractive efforts and, and um, surface conditions. Uh, I did allude to our wind tunnel for aerodynamic studies. <clears throat> this is located uh, uh, on our uh, airport, Uplands Campus in Ottawa. Um, it can accommodate up to about a 40-foot trailer in full scale. And we have smaller chambers where we do 30% um, scale modeling. We work extensively with uh, a lot of the major um, uh, truck and uh, track uh, truck and, tra and trailer manufacturers, um, and we also uh, we also have access to the uh, PMG testing facility uh, in Blainville, Quebec, where we do on-road studies. Uh, recently, having completed uh, some on-road studies in um, cooperative truck platooning. Um, uh, in mixed flow traffic with varying uh, trailer configurations and spacings and lateral offsets. Um, you know, we can model turbulence um, and we're, we're world renowned in, in bluff body aerodynamics. <clears throat> we have a, an energy uh, storage uh, and safety testing uh, facility. Uh, so this is a dedicated to basically um, all things um, battery testing, uh, including you know uh, overcharge, external heating, uh, abuse testing, um, thermal cycling simulation, uh, life cycle analysis. So effectively all things um, to support um, uh, electric vehicle uh, deployments uh, in terms of battery safety and, and battery performance. Here's, a, here's an example of uh, some, some battery abuse testing that we did do in, uh, in Blainville, Quebec. Uh, so what you see in the, in the image is a, um, effectively a, a, a penetrator that, that you might find uh, on the road. In this case, uh, it was meant to simulate uh, a trailer hitch that had fallen out of its receiver and found its way on the road. And, uh, and then you drive over this and what might it do to, uh, to your electric vehicle battery. In our Ottawa facility, we also have a very large structural dynamics facility. Again, uh, it's sized to take everything up to, uh, you know, a fully laden rail car. Uh, independent shakers, we use this a lot for um, accelerated life testing. We can do off-road uh, vehicle performance simulation. Um, so often what we'll do is, is take a vehicle and, and drive a, a prescribed uh, course, we can then uh, take that and, and, and by shaping the, uh, 
the spectrum, we can then condense it and do accelerated testing. So you can put years and years of uh, service life onto a vehicle in a relatively short period of time. Uh, I should note that we we back up these fil facilities. We're, we're not just a test house. We we back them out up with the engineering and professional uh, knowledge to to consult with you on on these. And we use these as you know test validation facilities. So uh, anything you see here, we can actually do in a simulation environment as well. We maintain uh, specialized rail test facilities. Um, from the climate chamber, again, uh, we have a vehicle impact ramp, uh, wheel bearing and brake facility, instrumented wheel sets, and a squeeze frame, all very uh, key in the uh, rail industry. So now, now we're going to get into a little bit more about our uh, automotive and transportation programs. Uh, currently, we have three programs, rail vehicle and track optimization. Uh, a vehicle propulsion technology program and the program that I lead, Fleet Forward 2020. <clears throat> so in our um, RVTO program, uh, it's really centered on maximizing the safety and efficiency of the North American rail system. Uh, so we do rail vehicle engineering, uh, provide better, safer, more durable, reliable cars, track and components. We do a lot of work in track maintenance planning. So we develop the tools and technologies designed to anticipate, anticipate and prioritize maintenance, maintenance expenditures uh, based on, uh, on track conditions, actual track conditions. We are world leaders in uh, the vehicle uh, track interaction. Um, so to improve the performance efficiency and safety and optimize that interface between the, the wheel and the track for the, uh, for the mission. So uh, if you're a passenger car, you want a smooth ride. If you're a freight car, you want some, some traction and some load carrying ability. Uh, those are often at odds with each other and, and we can design uh, wheel profiles and rail profiles to optimize the performance for you. And then in high performance rail, some, some of the broader safety and efficiency um, uh, related uh, challenges uh, with the rail industry, including things like um, improving uh, level crossings uh, and safety there, uh, and, and, you know, and um, basically getting real-time safety data uh, on, on train cars. In vehicle propulsion technologies, uh, we're looking, uh, we have three primary thrusts, one on advanced electric motors. Uh, and that's really about leveraging uh, Canada's supply chain in electric motor technologies. So um, powder pressing of soft magnetic composites and additive manufacturing for permanent magnets. It's really all about uh, the components that go into the electric motor and electric motor design uh, and basically optimizing uh, Canada's presence in that sector. In energy storage technologies, uh, we look at improved battery uh, formulations and chemistries, uh, efficient battery assembly, characterization, and safety testing. And finally, uh, we have a, a hydrogen fuel cell group that's looking at um, bringing hydrogen fuel cells to the transportation market, whether it be for auxiliary power generation in an aircraft uh, to actual hydrogen fuel cells in a vehicle or a mobile platform. And finally, uh, we get to my uh, Fleet Forward 2020 program uh, with a vision to maximize the safety and efficiency and environmental footprint of Canada's transportation sector. Uh, we do this in a number of ways. Uh, one of our thrusts is urban fleet optimization. So we have uh, a well-developed capability to model uh, transportation networks. Um, some, some Key examples of where we use this is uh, optimizing the deployment of electric or hybrid buses uh, for some urban transit operators. So as you can imagine, as these operators um, um, bring these uh, new technologies on board, they don't necessarily always have the expertise to know which route should I put these on? Where will I maximize my benefits? You know, what, what's gonna deliver the best customer experience with these new uh, technologies? So we can basically uh, model a transportation network, you know, a route, for example, uh, and show operators which routes, you know, would be better served by an electric bus, which might be better served by a hybrid bus, 
We can do comparative studies uh, on uh, energy demand and energy usage, whether it be with uh, you know a diesel compared to a hybrid, compared to a compressed natural gas bus, or to a full electric bus. The second thrust is intelligent transportation systems. So this is all of your connected and autonomous vehicle technologies and intelligent transportation systems. So uh, using big data and analytics to, uh, to study um, transportation network um, vulnerabilities, uh, looking at uh, vehicle to vehicle infrastructure and technologies. So we, we've done studies on, um, on uh, vehicle to infrastructure communications for level crossings um vehicle health prognostics work and in our london facility we maintain uh, very high expertise in uh, image processing uh and and uh, object uh, categorization so as apply as applicable to uh, connected and autonomous vehicle deployment uh so that's uh, real world mapping uh, high precision gps uh, lidar radar basically any of your sensing technologies and bringing those all together uh into a uh into a, a, a standard uh, uh, data set that can be used uh, to help with uh, connected autonomous vehicle driving functions. And the third thrust is our aerodynamic thrust. Uh, so as I indicated, we do significant work in wind tunnels and on roads. Um, we've contributed to uh, the standards development for things like uh, trailer boat tails. Uh, we've done extensive work in support of Transport Canada on uh, side skirts, uh, truck platooning uh, systems, uh, and, and the various benefits. And um, one thing that's that's kind of interesting is we don't just look at the theoretical maximum gains. We look at the real-world performance increases we might expect from these technologies. So an example in truck platooning systems is what is the effect uh, on performance uh, of a lateral offset? And you see that in the picture on the bottom right. Uh, you know, so what kind of precision do we need in a um, cooperative truck platooning system to be able to realize um, the, the, the maximum benefit from that system? Now we're going to speak a little bit about where we're going in the future, and that's bringing these uh, three different transportation programs into an advanced transportation systems program. So what we've recognized is, is we have a very complicated, complicated transportation system in Canada. Uh, and these are just some of the, uh, the modes, uh, marine, road and off-road, electrification, rail, intelligent transportation systems, artificial intelligence, human factors, and infrastructure. They all go in to the Canadian transportation system. And we've recognized that we have a, a strong muscle and a strong capability to contribute to this transportation system modernization. And that's if we, if we focus on automotive and specialized mobility, rail, uh, electrification, and other enabling technologies. Uh, we, can't, we can't play in all the sectors, so we've um, specifically not chosen to look at the marine or the aerospace directly those two sectors. But what we will do, uh, obviously, is if we come up with um, uh, solutions that work in, in rail, we do share those with our colleagues uh, in our Ocean Coastal Research uh, Center that looks in the marine or our aerospace center that looks at uh, the aerospace sector. So this is a kind of a snapshot of the uh, technologies we're going to look at uh, in our advanced transportation systems programs. The value proposition effectively boils down to three things. Let's develop a transportation system in Canada that's productive, safe, and clean. Um, productive means efficient, resilient, connected, and, and, a, and a good passenger experience. We have unique challenges in Canada in winter operations, so uh, a specific focus on winter conditions. And then, and then animating that the, the transportation industry supply chain. How can we ensure that Canada can remain competitive both you know, in a North American context and a global context as we develop some of these technologies? In the safety side, it's, it's about reducing the number and severity of transportation safety incidents, uh, providing Transport Canada with, with science-based uh, policy guidance, and, uh, and some targeted research in uh, in the evolving field of, of cyber secure transportation. So 
what do these new technologies uh, bring in terms of vulnerabilities uh, in the cyber side? And clean is about, you know, where safe is about reducing the number of incidents. Clean is about making sure that if there is an incident, the impact uh, is minimized. Uh, and then reducing transportation related emissions and uh, effectively reducing the environmental footprint throughout the life cycle of uh, transportation assets. So we will still have uh, some key rail research priorities, uh, but they boil down to efficient rail for goods transportation and an improved uh, rail passenger journey. Um, we will have a, a component there that brings ITS and enabling technologies to the rail sector. So that's smart sensors for condition monitoring, um, autonomous instrumented wheel sets, um, perhaps UAVs for monitoring track conditions, risk mapping of the network. And it's all about efficiently moving the goods and the people. In uh, electrification and alternative fuels, we'll continue our work in uh, electric motors and, and component development and manufacturing. But we're going to expand into um, system development and integration and system modeling and simulation. One of the strengths we have is we aren't limited to, um, to component level. We, we look at problems from the system level and we want to bring that rigor uh, to uh, electrification and alternative fuels in the transportation sector. And finally, in uh, automotive and special mobility, which is going to be another theme in uh, the Advanced Transportation Systems Program, we'll maintain our focus on fleet optimization. So that's that, that's around the transportation system modeling and making sure your fleet is, is correctly deployed. Uh, the uh, aerodynamics work will continue, but we're developing uh, increased capabilities in, um, in vehicle system level modeling and simulation. Uh, with a specific emphasis on um, on soft soil terra mechanics, um, most most um, simulation uh, environments out there are very good at treating hard surface um, um, modeling simulation requirements. So a vehicle on a highway is a is a pretty easy uh, physics model to do. When that surface becomes deformable, things things um, things get quite different. And understanding the uh, the wheel track or pad interface to that terrain is very important, and it's very important to Canada because um, climate change is is you know bringing a melting uh, up north and a softening of of the once hard uh, permafrost. Uh, there's going to be transportation challenges in the north. Uh, we also you know to support um, our heavy mining agriculture forestry uh, that, that works off-road, there's a significant uh, opportunity to support them in that as well. And I think that brings me to the end of the slides. Um, so I guess I'll pass the microphone back to Mike, who has been uh, looking at uh, your questions, and, and hopefully I can answer those for you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, William. That's a, a really good overview, and there's obviously a lot of work going on at NRC uh, in fields that are either directly related or certainly collaterally uh, related to the work that many of the members of ITS Canada are involved in. Maybe while while people are thinking through their thinking through their questions and getting ready to type them into the window, um, I did have one. You mentioned in in your presentation when you were talking earlier about the uh, the ITS program that you that you've been doing work in the big data and analytics field that's a, an area that's of considerable interest to me and I was wondering if you could just give me a, just a little bit more insight into the scope of those programs and and how that might change as you move into your your future plans for uh, for 2020 and beyond great thank you Mike yeah, so currently we've 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 used a lot of big data analytics to study the transportation uh, network as it is today. Uh, in uh, in the context right now, currently uh, in terms of risk risk mapping of that transportation network, uh, you know we're a very large country, uh, and often though there's uh, some very tenuous links to uh, certain communities in the country where if that link goes down, uh, the consequences could be uh, significant. So we've we've used big data. Uh, analytics to, to look and to do that risk mapping um, of our transportation network. And we see that expanding to more targeted areas 
Uh, we're working on some projects um, on the ice roads and uh, the winter roads uh, for northern Canada uh, and try to understand how they're used, um, who's using them, what their limits are, effectively trying to optimize that for those northern communities that depend on those. Um, more specific, you know, I don't know if that helps, if that answers your question or? Yeah, it certainly goes in the right direction. You actually introduced the se second question that I was wonder wondering about. One of the limitations that I know a lot of the initial research around around uh, uh, automated vehicles ha has had has been related to winter conditions and how does how do automated vehicles work in winter conditions and so on and so forth. Um, do you anticipate a special role for NRC given given Canada's latitude in in that field? I, I know the Americans are doing an enormous amount of work generally, but we know winter. So uh, w are we doing specific work related to winter conditions? Yes, absolutely, and that's uh, that's a focus. Uh, of, of a lot of our researchers and our research in uh, our London-based facility is around um, sensor performance and sensor degradation um, in winter conditions, in less than ideal conditions. We've also um, uh, partnered up with uh, the Royal Military College and they actually uh, are completing some research on behalf of us as well on uh, sensor performance uh, in, in extreme temperatures, in, in fog and dust and snow. Um, so a lot of the work that we do is, is centered around um, aggregating those sensor inputs uh, and determining a, a best path, you know, a best result out of those diverse sensors. Uh, which sensors might we need more of in Canada? Uh, everything down to, uh, you know, are, are we interested in, in doing any kind of infrastructure improvements to actually support sensor operation? Um, because winter is is kind of unique for us. Uh, thank, thanks, William. Um, William, I'm going to have to turn back to to um, Janneke because she tells me she's got a couple of questions, but I can't see them for some reason. So, Janneke, could you pick up, please? Sorry, unmute myself. So, the first question came from uh, Danielle. Uh, any operational software developments for ITS applications? Uh, I, I, I guess I'd ask Danielle, is he, can he uh, clarify exactly what he means in terms of operational software developments? Meant uh, on, traffic manage, on traffic management. Right, so we, we typically don't develop uh, software code ourselves. Uh, we we typically basically see our role as as supporting those that are developing that to ensure that it's going to be applicable within the Canadian context and, and in working with you know the regulators to uh, to support the deployment of those various codes. Uh, but it, but in terms of specific code development, uh, we don't do that in this context in the ITS context. Thank you. Yeah. And. Um, Emily is wondering, are you looking into blockchain to enhance the security of data exchange networks? Yeah, so um, the, on the data network and the cybersecurity, this is um, a kind of an emerging area of research for us right now. Um, so we are looking at the various um, um, options that are available to secure that data. But the other thing we are looking at is, is understanding just, you know, again, it's, it's the system level approach we take. We don't, we don't often look at the, the, the detailed things, but what we do look at is as uh, connected autonomous vehicles are, are deployed, there will be an enormous amount of data uh, produced on that platform that will be potentially communicated off the platform to the infrastructure. And one of the things we look at is, how much of that is actually critical to the safe operation of the vehicle? Um, so we're, we're taking the approach of we're trying to, to limit or to try and find the limit of what that data requirement is. Um, but certainly, yes, blockchain and, and those sorts of uh, things are, are uh, part of our research. Thank you. Uh, the next uh, question and comment too is from Nadia. She writes, impressive. I'm lucky that I attended this session. I would like to get more information about your partners here in Nova Scotia. 
and how they can help me with my area of research, specifically applying uh, artificial intelligence on the area of PLC and, I and IoT solutions, and about helping in application-enabled platforms to test and improve the data analytics on IoT and embedded systems. Great. Well, well thank you, Nat. Nadia. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you were able to participate. Uh, at, at, um, at the end of my presentation, there is my contact information. Uh, one of the, and, and I invite you to, to reach out to me after the webinar, and, I, uh, and we can talk about uh, your requirements and whether or not it fits within um, my program or even my research center. One of the mandates we have at NRC is to, is to help you make those connections with uh, the research center and the researchers who might be able to serve you uh, even better. Um, so once I understand exactly um, what you're looking for, I'll be able to connect you with, with the, the perfect person to help you out. Wonderful. Thank you. Omar would like to know, what's the process for engaging with the NRC? Does an organization need to bring forward a detailed proposal or would they work with the NRC to establish a program? Right. So uh, as, I, as I tried to explain, uh, it, it really is uh, entirely up to to you how you approach us. Uh, in the past, we've you know we've received phone calls and we've sat and worked together to develop a, a collaborative research agenda uh, to develop a program. Uh, this is a service that we do offer, uh, and, and there's no charge uh, to reach out to us. You know, we're not going to uh, invoice you for the time spent uh, trying to uh, you know. Um, put some bounds, let's say, on your problem uh, or, or your opportunity. Um, it's really up to you. All you need to do is, is literally make that first phone call uh, and then we will bring the, the full force of the NRC to help you and, and to, to figure out what mechanism will best serve your requirements. Thank you. Uh, and that is uh, also a question that I asked uh, Mike Bailey because I can't ask questions myself on the question pane, but um, I think uh, what you just uh, uh, answered is, is important for ITS Canada members to know as well. Um, and so I'm glad that the webinar is being recorded so they can reference to, um, to the various questions and answers um, that you have been uh, given. Um, Danielle is wondering, ITS is mainly hardware driven to generate data, but optimization software for routing and traffic management is the poor child of ITS. Are there any contributions from the NRC in this sort of software? Right, so uh, we we again, like I mentioned, we don't typically uh, develop uh, you know traffic networking uh, software. Uh, what we try and understand is is the impact that uh, the integration of various different elements of the transportation network might have on each other. Um, so I don't know that that answers your question, but in terms of specific code development, we don't do that. Uh, not in not in the ITS space yet. Um, the, the exception would be uh, in our uh, off-road mobility and our rail uh, areas, we do do code develop and co code development, and we have in the past developed code that is now used uh, to support those. Uh, so that's not to say we can't help you with that in the future. Thank you. And um, I have a question a little bit more about the cooperation between the NRC and IRAP. Um, does IRA provide the funding to the NRC for projects? Let's say that I want to submit a, a project proposal and would that funding then come um, after it's been reviewed and uh, agreed to, would IRAP then provide the funding for some of those projects? Yes, yeah, so, so IRAP uh, is there. I, I mean, IRAP is, is hosted within the National Research Council, but it is there to provide direct funding uh to uh the stakeholders that come to them for funding uh and there are also other programs that um a small medium enterprise can access in terms of a, a discount program so if they then chose to use that irap funding um to buy some research at the nrc we offer a uh, um a very very competitive rate for uh for research and scientific uh, innovation uh and access to our facilities uh, and, and we work uh, very closely with our IRAP advisors um, to make sure that, that any inquiry 
uh, to the IRAP program is is kind of routed to the the research center who can best take care of the needs of that client. Thank you. Um, does anybody have any other questions? Um, I've shared all the questions with you that were submitted in the question pane. No. Um, Mike, do you have anything? No, no, no nothing. No, nothing else. Uh, nothing else from me. But I, I would like to, William, thank you and thank the audience for for your participation. Good, good questions. Uh, I think there are some opportunities for some of the some of the members that are on the call today, and I'm sure they will be in touch with you. Um, you mentioned that there's a contact slide at the at the end, and in any event, we'll make sure that that's attached to the presentation when it's when it's posted. Wonderful. Yeah. So, I, sorry. Sorry, Mike. If if, if I can add um, uh, to to the ITS members who are who are still on the call, I mean, even if you don't think um, your opportunity would fit well with the NRC, there, there's really no risk, no harm in uh, in giving us a call, uh, and and we can talk about it because you'd be very surprised um, at the range of things that that we can uh, we can do for you. Thank you. Wonderful. So with that, I would like to thank um, William. I would like to thank Mike today for your presentation and your, for your facilitating today's webinar. I'd like to thank the audience. Um, don't forget to sign up for the ITS Canada Awards virtual celebration happening this coming Monday. Um, and the webinar recording will be made available tomorrow. Thank you all and have a great afternoon. Bye, everybody.